What is up, best ones worldwide? It's the best one DBTV here, back with a brand new basketball talk video. If you're not a best one yet and you are a basketball fan, hit that subscribe button now. Turn on post notifications because you already know the grind is real. We are almost at 1,000 subscribers. We are going to be doing a big giveaway when we reach 1,000 subscribers. So if you're not a best one, definitely hit that subscribe button now. Before we get into the news, I just want to say hats off to Jamal Murray and Jokic. The way that this Denver Nuggets team is playing is phenomenal. And last night, I was watching the game and I really thought the LA Clippers were going to win in seven. And I just didn't think that the Clippers were going to lose and blow a 3-1. Which I cannot believe they actually did. And everybody had the Clippers winning it all. And they lost to the Denver Nuggets. And the Nuggets, man, I just want to say, I just give my hats off to this team because everything that they're doing is right. And Murray and Jokic are becoming legends right beneath our eyes. And it's very exciting to watch as a basketball fan. So my hat's off to the Denver Nuggets. And I hope that the Nuggets do take it all the way because my team's obviously not in the playoffs. And the Nuggets, the way that they have been fighting this whole time has been just amazing to watch. Seeing them, you know, go into Game 7 against Utah going into Game 7 against the Clippers, who were the favorites to win it all. It's just really crazy to watch, and just the role players around them are all coming together. They're working great together. Paul Millsap is finally out of that friggin' hole of his. He's finally out actually playing good. Michael Porter Jr. is looking very promising, and just the whole Nuggets franchise is looking very promising. So, I just want to say congratulations to the Denver Nuggets, especially the real fans out there that have stayed true to Denver because they have been fighting, and I hope that they continue to fight, and they pull the biggest upset of them all and beat LeBron James and the Lakers. But now, let's talk about the news that has broke, and of course, as a Brooklyn Nets fan, I am going to give you guys my opinion, and I'm going to cover this. So, the Brooklyn Nets offered Spencer Dinwiddie, Jared Allen, Musa, and a future protected first round pick to the New Orleans Pelicans for Drew Holiday. And I think this is going to be one of the most important trades for the Brooklyn Nets and the New Orleans Pelicans. I think for both of these teams, this trade is either a win, a win trade where they get themselves that championship that all 30 teams in the NBA want. Or it's going to be one of those trades where it just doesn't execute the right way. And I think right now New Orleans has nothing to lose in this. So I think for New Orleans it is a win-win because they already have great pieces for their team. They have Lonzo Ball who's a phenomenal playmaker and he can play defense. They also got most improved player Brandon Ingram who has shown so much development in New Orleans. And he's that perfect scorer. And they obviously have Zion Williamson, who has the potential to take over the NBA. And they also have a lot of underrated pieces on their team, like J.J. Riddick, who can shoot. They got Jackson Hayes, who has a lot of promise as a center. They also have Jaleel Okafor, who has shown a little bit of promise. Not really that much, but um, they also have Josh Hart. And they also have a lot of very underrated pieces on their team. So for New Orleans to make a trade with Brooklyn, who for the years has been really known for making their players a lot better than when they came to the league, I think is a great move for New Orleans. And what they're getting out of this trade is another phenomenal playmaking score in Spencer Dinwiddie, who they can switch him and Lonzo around depending on what they want to do. But I think that Dinwiddie would be a great piece for the New Orleans Pelicans. They're probably going to have him as their sixth man. 
and I think eventually Spencer Dinwiddie has more of a chance of taking that starting position from Lonzo Ball if Lonzo keeps not improving which the bubble Lonzo is not that good but season Lonzo showed a lot of promise but Spencer Dinwiddie I think could potentially take that starting spot from Lonzo Ball also Musa, that gives them a shooter who hasn't really got to show what he can really do. He hasn't really gotten any minutes in Brooklyn, but I don't mind getting rid of Musa because he just hasn't done nothing. Anytime he comes in the game, it gives me a freaking headache. I have to literally take Advil when I watch Musa play because that's all he does is freaking brick for Brooklyn. But New Orleans, they have nothing to lose getting Musa, and he could develop into something over there with the right people. Pieces. Also, I think what really makes this very, very underrated for the New Orleans Pelicans, Jared Allen could be the game changer in this trade. And the reason why I say that is because Jared Allen has so much potential and New Orleans already showed that they can make the best out of these players. I think Brandon Ingram has developed into an all-star. He is balling in New Orleans. That's why he won most improved player. And Lonzo Ball, before the bubble, Lonzo playing for New Orleans really showed a lot of promise. He is, his shot's looking a lot better every game he's playing. Besides the bubble, also, his defense is phenomenal, and he's a phenomenal playmaker, and just having him and Zion on the court at the same time, there's so much potential, and so much, like, there's so much that they can do with that duo, because Lonzo's literally like a quarterback, Zion is like that tight end, <laughs> it's literally Brady and Gronk, but basketball style, and I think... What's going to make this a game changer trade for New Orleans is having Jared Allen paired up with Zion Williamson down low. And I think that's very, very scary because I think a lot of Brooklyn Net fans don't understand. I think Jared Allen is great, but the problem is, is that we don't have a solid power forward. So Jared Allen is left. He has to match up with guys like Blake Griffin, friggin' Joel Embiid, Jokic, Carl Anthony Towns, all these freaking strong muscled centers that he has to go against. But having Zion Williamson by him who is built like a football player <laughs> is going to help Jared Allen out so much and I think it's going to really develop Jared Allen and I think Jared Allen just hasn't had the right opportunities in Brooklyn. Also having Brandon Ingram and Zion, I think Jared Allen is going to develop into a top five center in the league. That's right, it's a big bold statement I'm saying, but I think that Jared Allen is the game changer in this trade for New Orleans. Now let's talk about the Brooklyn Nets. The Nets get Drew Holiday. I think this is also a trade that could potentially be that final trade that the Nets need for them to make a run for that championship. Or it's going to be one of those what-if scenarios that we're going to look back at from years from now and say, what if the Nets did not trade their depth, which was Jared Allen and Spencer Dinwiddie. I think this is the right move for Brooklyn. Unfortunately, I don't want to get rid of Spencer Dinwiddie because this man is just getting better and better every single year. And we already know Spencer Dinwiddie, when that contract is up, he's getting that max contract and he is going to get a starting job in the NBA because he has proved himself from being a, just a G League player to being the best backup point guard in the league who can show up. Jared Allen. This is another thing that's going to suck for Brooklyn because I think Jared Allen was playing a lot better than DeAndre Jordan this year, but obviously I think DeAndre Jordan is going to be more focused, more prepared, and I think that KD is going to make DeAndre Jordan a lot better. But now, getting rid of Jared Allen, that means that we have to go after a backup center. And we need a center who has muscle and can grab rebounds. So getting rid of our back, getting rid of our center 
and our backup point guard is something that we are now going to have to address in the offseason. But now the only thing that I want to know as well with this trade, having Drew Holiday, is what is going to be our starting five? Because if we do get Drew Holiday, I think KD will be playing the power forward position. And it's going to be Kyrie at point guard, Drew Holiday at shooting guard, at small forward, either Joe Harris if we re-sign him, or Karis LeVert, which I would pick LeVert over Joe Harris at the small forward position. Power forward, we got KD and then DeAndre Jordan at the center. And then Joe Harris as the sixth man for the bench, if we re-sign him. That's the only thing I want to know, but I do think that this is very a very underrated move for Brooklyn because the one thing the Nets have been lacking for the last couple of years since the Sean Marks era is defense. And that is something that when I went to that playoff game, I was watching Brooklyn struggle on defense. And I think even watching them on TV, you still see them struggling on defense. I think this team has the offensive weapons. You got Kyrie, who is one of the most elite scorers in the league today. And you got KD, who is also another elite scorer. And you got Levert, who has the potential to get 20 points a game, who has really shown a lot of promise to being that third star. And Joe Harris, who is one of the best three-point percentage shooters in the league. Very underrated. But Drew Holiday brings defense to this team. And I think some kind of toughness that this team needs in order to take that next step in it on this team. Because Kyrie is a great offensive player, but he lacks the defense. And that is where Drew Holiday comes in, and that will help Kyrie play the best basketball Kyrie can play. I think that this is a very underrated move for the Brooklyn Nets. I think that they should execute this trade, but if they can try to get rid of Prince or Kerglu or just a, a, a couple role players instead of getting rid of both Spencer Dinwiddie and Jared Allen. One of them you're obviously going to have to trade because Drew Holiday is one of the most underrated perimeter defenders, it best perimeter defenders in the league. So you're obviously going to have to get rid of one of them and probably you're going to have to get rid of both. But if I were the Nets, I would really try to really finagle my way around and try to get rid of a couple of the role players like Prince who don't fit this team. And if you have to give them an unprotected first, you might as well because this team is built to win. But do not, Brooklyn, please, Sean Marks, do not get rid of future picks like the freaking Clippers did for Paul George. Don't do that because I do not want to be without a first round pick like we were with Tatum and Brown, okay? I don't want that. But um, if it's like this coming draft or like the next draft, then you do it. Then you obviously do the unprotected. But... This is going to be, I think, a win-win trade for both of these teams. I think the New Orleans Pelicans are going to see, you're going to see a lot of improvement if they get Jared Allen on their team. I think Jared Allen is the changing factor for the Pelicans. Um, Dinwiddie, I think that he also could be a game changer because I think Dinwiddie is going to have more of a chance of taking that starting position from Lonzo Ball rather than Kyrie Irving. But, um... Yeah, that shall do it, guys. Um, let me know what you guys think about this trade in the comment section below. I'm still very iffy. I think that this could be a friggin' championship trade. But I don't want to get excited. I don't want to get my hopes up. And this could also be a trade that we look back and it's what if. <laughs> but um, if you guys enjoyed this video and... You guys want more basketball talks where I can just talk about more things around the league and stuff? Make sure to smash that like button. If you're not a best one yet and you are a basketball fan, especially Brooklyn Nets, 
hit that subscribe button now. Turn on the post notifications because uploads come out of nowhere on this channel. Links down in the description below. Go follow me on all my social medias. All that is down below. And to all the best ones out there worldwide, Best One Nation, Brooklyn Nets Nation, we are taking over. Peace.